Welcome to Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, the podcast where nostalgia comes alive. Since July of 2021, Jake and his friends have interviewed professionals in the worlds of acting, directing, writing, puppeteering, and many more. Who will they be chatting with in this week's interview? Find out in this Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show episode. Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, where nostalgia comes alive. I'm your host, Jake Deffenbaugh. With me today, as always, our co-host, Chris McSpee, and Matt Bingo with his pal, Julius Snoof. How are you guys doing? We're great. Good. How are you good. doing? Doing great. We got some here. I'm doing great as well. Thank you for asking. Yes, Matt, and, yes, Matt, Matt and Julius, what do, we, what do you have for today? Who do we have today? Today's guest is a British puppeteer and actress. In 1978, probably her most well-known character, Annie Sue Pig. Miss Piggy's rival, at least according to her, was introduced on The Muppet Show. She's also an actress on the West End stage. Her roles include Isabel in the 1982 West End production of The Pirates of Penance, as well as Edith in the film adaptation the following year. In addition to The Muppets, she was also Mother Bunny in the Tales of the Bunny Picnic. What a Miss Kitty Kiss, Kissy Kiss, Kissy Kiss, that's a lot to say among others on Mopa Top Shop and Vanilla on the First Hester Hotel. Please welcome Miss Louise Gold. Welcome, Louise. Happy to have you here. Hello. Hi, hi, hi. Hello. Happy, Happy to have you here. here. So Good to see, we, yes, thank good you. To see you. Good to see you. Yes. So we know, we know who you are, even though we kind of introduced you. In your own words, would you care to introduce yourself? Hello, my name is Louise Gold. I'm a puppeteer, but I also act. I've done lots of things. I was in Mamma Mia in the West End, Mary Poppins, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, Follies, Assassins, lots of things. I've just done an episode of a British TV soap called Doctors. I did a horror film last year in which I got burnt horribly to death. Um, So I do lots of things, but I do puppeteering as well. I worked on the series of Dark Crystal on Netflix, as well as on the original film. Um, Yeah, and loads and loads of Henson things. Nice. Awesome. Awesome. So what was your background like and how did you grow up? How did I grow up? (laughs) Well, wow. um, <laughs> I, I actually, my mother was an actress. She wasn't famous. She was a jobbing actress. She did understudying. She did all kinds of things. And I went to a stage school when I was 11 and learned how to sing and dance. And I've, I've always been, I'm still tall, but I was tall as a kid and lots of the kids would get work because they were little and I would never get any jobs because I was always too tall. Children aren't tall. That's not true, obviously, but in acting terms, children are little and grown-ups are big. So Hmm. I wouldn't get work as a kid. Hmm. Too tall. (laughs) So so now, uh, how are you inspired to first get into acting and puppetry? Well, I always wanted to act because it just seemed like fun. Puppetry was total accident. I did, um, I made puppets. My mum loved us making things. So my brother and I would do papier-mâché, make glove puppets and things. And we had, there was a company, I don't know whether it was in America, Pelham Puppets, which Mm. were like string puppets. And I had the gypsy puppet but always they'd get tangled up. So, you know, you had them when you got them and then they get tangled up and it would be a mess. So I don't really do puppets. And it was just purely an accident that I auditioned for the Muppet Show because I was tall and they wanted a tall woman. And because the other puppeteers were tall and the sets were built so you could stand up with your hand above your head, so you wouldn't be seen for comfort. And so they were looking for someone tall. So it was a purely fluke thing. If Jim Henson and the fellow puppeteers hadn't been tall, I wouldn't be a puppeteer now. There would be some short woman you would be talking to now. (laughs) That's awesome. So now I'm kind of curious, do you remember the first thing you acted professionally in? 
I, the, my first thing was while I was still at drama school, I did a pantomime in Malvern and I was the fairy Bowbell. You guys, I don't know if you're familiar with pantomime. A little bit, yeah. A little bit, a yeah. Bit. So where the woman plays the man, it was Dick Whittington, Lord Mayor of London. And I was the fairy Bowbell. And I sang, ding dong, ding a ling dong, were the steeple bells ever quite so gay. Wonderful, wonderful day. That was my song as the fairy Bowbell. And um, the, Malvern is a very beautiful place. And there's Malvern water. There's a spring in the hills. And I remember it was around Christmas going up in the hills. And I would have been 16 and running down the hills singing the sound of music because it seemed appropriate. Nice. Um, do you have any favorite musicals or stage productions you were a part of? Well, one of the ones I was desperate to do, I saw Godspell, the first London production, was at a theatre called The Roundhouse with um, someone called David Essex and Jeremy Irons, who went on to become a major movie star. And I thought it was the most amazing thing I'd ever seen. So later on, I did a production of Godspell in Leatherhead, which was much later on, but I thought that was amazing because it was like one of the things, you know, you see a seminal thing, you see, I would, if I could be in Godspell. So when I finally was in Godspell, that was amazing. Oh, awesome. Uh, but, but loads of, I've been very, very lucky. And, um, you know, when I think back to working on The Muppet Show, because I didn't really want to be a puppeteer, I wasn't, Maybe if I'd wanted to be a puppeteer, I would have been so overwhelmed with it that I wouldn't have been able to do it. But because it was an accident, I don't really know who these people were. And Jim Henson and Frank Oz and Dave Golds and Richard Hunt and Jerry Nelson and Steve Whitmire joined later. Steve joined after me. Oh, that's they awesome. were incredible, but I didn't really know, you know, to be on the floor with, because I was 20 and I didn't know how amazing it was. And working oh. with all these huge celebrities that we had every week, you know, these amazing mm, people, yes. Bob Hope, Danny Kay, Elton John, just incredible people. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. Oh yes. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of curious. So how, how did you begin working on The Muppet Show? Cause that was, uh, that was your first uh, project with The Muppets, right? Yes, yes. Nice. Well, the, the very first thing, they hired me, I did an audition, and I had to put on a puppet for Jim and Frank, and they were sitting at a desk, and I didn't, I'd never seen the puppet show at that point, it had only been going for a little while in England, and I didn't know Sesame Street, and I had to put on a puppet and just count one, two, three, four, to see if I had any aptitude, and then... I, don't, I can't remember what else I had to do at the audition, but they found out I could sing. And the very first thing I did was record three-part harmony of Chanson de Moor. And other people worked the puppets. But I and I was living at home with my mum and I went home and I was crying. I I can't do this. I've got to learn three-part harmony by Monday and it's so difficult. And they're going to fire me before I've even started. And I went and I worked on it all weekend and I went in there and oh none of us could have done this this is brilliant you're so clever so one of the things that um they could do it because they were they were brilliant but you know I could sing and um so that was one of the strong things so first of all I would do chickens in the background running across in the backstage and gradually learn. And, so, and then I would do a voice and someone else would work the puppet. But slowly, slowly, they taught me how to puppeteer. So I picked it up as I went along. Nice. And I was very good at it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so we're curious to know, there, there were a lot of wonderful guests on The Muppet Show. But who were some of your favorite celebrity guests you got to work with during that time? Well, for me, what was amazing was there were there were a lot of English guests. You know, John Cleese was on the guest, Elton John, mm. um, Shirley Bassey, British. Um, 
but there were people that I didn't know. I, I loved, when I was a kid, I loved Danny Kay. So having Danny Kay on was amazing. And Bob Hope, I used to watch all the road movies on TV. But then people like George Burns, I didn't really know who he was. But then I started researching and Burns and Allen, finding out about them. Um, and he was incredible. So these people that I had, Steve Martin, who none of the English people knew who Steve Martin was. Of course, you won't know now because you're too young who half these people were. But Steve Martin uh, was not known in England and all the English people saying, who is this guy? He's not funny because they didn't get his humour at all. Uh, so all these people I discovered that I didn't know, Linda Ronstadt, again, mm. I didn't know who she was. And, and then after we did um, uh, The Muppet Show, I worked with her again on The Pirates of Benzance, the movie, and uh, she was amazing and I loved her voice. But people I didn't really know, I got to know the, a lot of the American people. And, and they were all so different as well, you know, these from yeah. different... Uh, branches of entertainment business. Sylvester Stallone, who I had a big crush on, I thought he was gorgeous. And, um, yeah, it was amazing people. Carol Burnett, just these legends. Oh, yes. oh. Yeah, that's one. That's a classic one. Yeah, yeah, Def definitely. There, there are a lot of good ones. I remember um, Sandy Duncan was on. Yeah, she was on the first series. That was before I joined. Ah. There, there, there are a lot of other ones. I remember a uh, Big Bird and the cast of Sesame Street came on. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah that was awesome. Yeah, I mean, no, we had incredible, incredible people, absolutely incredible. Um, and as I say, it was an education for me. And uh, apart from meeting the guests, the other education for me, we had these incredible musical directors and all the songs. Richard Hunt, who became my bosom buddy, would kind of give me a musical education because I didn't know Guys and Dolls and all these incredible musicals. And we would do songs for them. We did um, with Pearl Bailey. I got the heart swag here, his name is Paul Revere. And, He's going, this is from Guys and Dolls. You have to know Guys and Dolls. <laughs> so all these things. And doing all these songs every week and working with this incredible. We had the Jack Parnell Orchestra. And we would sing live with this incredible orchestra. It was amazing. And now it's all done with a computer. You know, all the stuff we've done recently. There's yeah. one person with a computer laying down tracks. But we were doing it with these incredible live musicians. Wow. which was uh, just amazing. Uh -huh. The show was That's huge wonderful. in England, too. It was huge. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Very huge deal. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Sure. And one of the fun things, we got invited to the openings of things. Like, I remember we went to the opening of Popeye the because we were a little bit celebrities, you know, people didn't know who we were, but we'd go to these things and Liza Minnelli did the show and then she was doing a show in London. So we went to see that and got to the party. And, you know, it was a really exciting time because it was a big, as you say, it was a big deal. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, something else that was a big deal too. I think it was, I feel it was just before you started uh, I think the Muppets did the Royal Variety performance. That's right. Yes. Seven, 77? Yep. 1977 that was. I feel that was just before you, though, right? I did. Um, I did a... Oh God, yeah, I know. I did a Royal Variety with them. Was that in 77? I did, because I was dressed as a monster. And in the lineup, up um, I bought an outfit... And then David Laser, who's a producer, said, I'm really sorry, you're not going to be in the lineup as a person, you'll be in a, mon a monster costume. So oh. I was in the lineup, and it was before Prince Charles was married. He was at that point still the most eligible bachelor in the world. And Prince Charles walked along the lineup and said, Are there any women in the Muppets? And I was dressed as Big Mama and pushed my way forward and went, Yes, Prince, Prince! And get me. <laughs> <laughs> The security, I don't know, they didn't seem to get to me, but um, yes, so I was at the Royal Variety, but I wasn't uh, allowed to be in the lineup because I was too baby. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, that's cool. 
this. I'm, I'm kind of curious, you know, since it's been a little over a decade now since we lost uh, Jerry, what was it like getting to, you know, know him and work with him? Well, I loved, you know, I always describe all those people as like my family. Um, Jerry, I absolutely adored him. What can I say? You know, it's it's terrible when you lose people of your family. And I'm still very, very yeah. close to Jim's children. Um, mm. You know, his daughters. Kind of, we, we all grew up together. And Jerry, I did a lot of musical numbers with Jerry. We would sing together. And I loved, loved working with him. Um... I loved it, you know, they, they're not, um, Dave Golds is, we we weren't so key, I think he was a bit frightened, I was a bit too loud when we were doing the Muppet Show originally, but he has now become a very good friend, I was just staying with him last year in November in oh, nice. where he lives, and I, I adore him, you know, these are my family, I've known Dave for over 40 years, you know, it's incredible. Mm-hmm. For how many years? Well, a lot of years. Yes, a lot of years. A very, very long time. <laughs> we've, we've all grown up together. We've been through this. And those of us that are still here, and I saw Frank Oz while we were over there as well. You oh, know, cool. We've been through so much together. We've known each other for a very, very long time. Yeah, and I think uh, Matt Vogel, who I know you've done some work with years later, has yeah. uh, done a great job continuing... Uh, Jerry's legacy with his characters. Well, there is so much love, you know, all the people who have taken over the characters. I mean, Matt got to, you, you know, Steve Whitmar worked with Jim. So when he was doing Kermit, he had worked with Jim. Um, Dave Rudman knew Richard Hunt very well. Um, Eric obviously knew, knows Frank, but hadn't worked with him, I don't think, quite as closely. But you know, the the characters have been handed on with a great deal of love and the new performers are brilliant. They're absolutely brilliant. They're brilliant puppeteers, brilliant performers. They're absolutely. not the same because they have their own skills and their own talents, but they are yeah. they're brilliant. Yeah, I think, you know, it's, you know, we talk, we've talked about this with the number of puppetry guests we've had on, but it's it's important to keep, you know, a character's legacy alive. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, and with with the spirit, you know, the thing that we are trying, obviously, as it gets further away, and people are doing characters. You know, Matt didn't work with Jim, so it becomes you're trying to take it on, and it has to be their creation as well. They have to, the characters come from people's souls and their spirits. So you have to bring your own thing to it. You can't just do an imitation. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Is she is she coming in, Jakey? Um, she's been. <laughs> she might be here. Like up up up. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> there she is. I got. Yeah, we're so disorganized today, aren't we? Yes, we. Hello. Yep. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hello, Margot. Hello. Hello. Hey. Hello. Yes, for those watching or listening, Margo's a really good friend of ours. Um, we've known her how, how long? Like a little over a month now, I think. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, and she's she's a guest co-host for today. So. Yes. Yay. Sorry, we started without you, Margo. There was a mess up with the time difference. <laughs> no British worries. Started so wonderful to have you as a guest co-host, Margo. Yes, Margo. Yes. She's only she's only the third guest co-host we've ever had i think i think so yeah. she's obviously very yeah. special though yes yes <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes she is absolutely so yes, Mar is. so margo if you want you can take the next question about one of louise's most well-known characters sure um, um you were known for uh puppeteering on the love it show annie sue pig which That's was one of my one of my favorite which is one of my favorite characters and uh what was it like performing her well, it's so funny because at the time they developed Annie Sue Pig for me and I didn't really get it. Later, looking back, I realised that all the characters that everyone did 
were aspects of themselves. So Annie Supig was very young, very enthusiastic, uh, wanted to be a star, really, really loved it all, enthusiastic about everything. Oh, it was me. It was me. So, but you you kind of go, oh, that's why they developed that character. It was me coming in and being bouncy. So I love doing Annie Sue Pig. And um, the first show, initially I was saying, I couldn't, they, she did a song Carbon Paper. And I think that's in the Leo Sayer show. Oh uh, yeah, that's a good one. And oh, yes. I did the singing and Frank actually, Frank Oz did the puppeteering because it was still when I was, you know, not terribly experienced. Mm -hmm. So he did that number and I would do some of the less um, taxing puppeteering things. Mm -hmm. So I got to watch Frank doing it. But yeah, so I love Danny Sue. I mean, it's only much, much later the last Muppet character I did, or Henson character, was um, Fenella the, in the Furchester Hotel. Oh, which yeah. I yeah. Uh -huh. yes. yes. Because by then, you know, now I'm much more confident as a puppeteer. It's only taken me 40 odd years, but you know, um, you've got to start somewhere. And so to be able mm -hmm. to do the voice and the character and feel absolutely confident with the movement was a gift. And, and, you know, over the years, I did The Secret Life of Toys and The Animal Show and um, uh, Fafna Hall, Ghost of Fafna Hall. So I've done a lot of stuff where I've done other characters. But Annie Sue obviously was really important because it was my first, first character. Yeah, definitely. She, she is a great character, too. Yes. So. Yeah, it absolutely is. Yeah. Yeah, so now moving on from the Muppet Show a little bit, what were some of your favorite Muppet movies to work on? Well, I love The Great Muppet Caper because that was the first one I did and we had great fun and we were all on location around London and it was really, really good fun. I loved that. I, you know, um, Muppet Christmas Carol. Yes, that's that's one of my favorites. Yeah, so it's probably my favorite Muppet movie. Honestly, it's probably my favorite. Well, working with Michael Caine, who was just brilliant, brilliant, so lovely to work with, kind, generous, but so skilled, and that was a real education to work with him you know, he knew what he was doing. Of all the people we worked with in the Muppets, probably, you know, his dedication, he was so committed to the film and brilliant, brilliant to work with. So that was an amazing thing to be part of. And then Dark Crystal was an amazing thing to be, they're all amazing. They're everything, everything I've ever done is amazing. No, I have, <laughs> <laughs> I love my, I love my work. I am so lucky. And Dark Crystal was an amazing thing to be part of as well and to work on. And so different and so peculiar, the Skeksis, you know, to be one of the Skeksis. Can you hear my dog that I'm dog sitting for snor snoring in the background? A little bit, Lazy. but it's, it's okay. not that bad. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... So what was it like getting to return to your Muppet roots and puppeteer on Muppets Most Wanted? Well, that was lovely because it was a chance to get to know really and hang out. Well, I, one of the most fun things was uh, sitting around with Dave Golds laughing because he makes me laugh so much. And <laughs> we had one day where we were the Muppet Orchestra there were various scenes and all you could see of our puppets, we were sitting in an orchestra bit and you could see the tip. I think one of them, I can't remember whether it was Dave or me, but doing a violin and all you could see was the tip of the bow. And I thought, I'm sitting with this man who has done all these amazing characters. This is Gonzo the Great. And he's not going, why am I sitting here all day in an uncomfortable position? So all you can see is the top of my bow. We're just having the best day ever. We're laughing. We're talking about the universe, life, death, and the joy 
of the joy of it and then getting to know all the newer puppeteers and spending time with them. So that was lovely. And Annie Sue popped up in the wedding scene. She got to be. Oh, there. that's right. Yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. She yeah. popped up. So it was, it was the best thing about Muppets Most Wanted was, you know, I didn't do any major characters. I was just around all the time, was hanging out with all the guys and making friends with all the new, the new performers, which was just lovely. And hanging out with Steve and Dave, who I love, and Dave Rudman. Well, they, I love them all. They're all so brilliant. I love my friends. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, Muppets yeah. Most Wanted is a good movie. I actually saw it in the theaters. Same, as well as uh, the first, oh, the 2011 uh, Muppet yes. movie. Yes. yes. I didn't work on that one. That was done in, in America, so I didn't work on that. But uh, um, but I worked, I worked on Muppets Most Wanted, which was just brilliant. It was, it was such fun. Such fun. Huh. That's wow. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, great Muppet Caper is a classic. It's oh yeah, up there, it's up there. It's one of my personal favorites. Yeah, mm -hmm. wonderful. Well, I loved you know Diana Rigg and Charles Grodin, who I became yes. friends with, was lovely to work with, and just seeing people take it so seriously. Um, no, it was great. And I at the end of the film, I have I still have the necklace. Um, oh wow. The, yeah, I have. I got quite a few of the costumes from that film. The um, got given them very well. There's a lot of Diana Riggs jewelry. Um, oh, wow. wow. Oh, that's awesome. Wow. They're not real. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. No, so, not, not, not surprised. Yeah. So, Matter Julius, which one do you want to take this next question? I'll take it. Go for it. Right. So you, you 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 had brought up uh, the Dark Crystal earlier. You've also worked on a number of other projects with the Jim Henson Company, yeah. including, as we said, the Dark Crystal and the Tales of the Bunny Picnic. Yes, uh, I love that one. It's a very very cute special. Oh yes, I was mummy bunny. bunny. That was great. All those bunnies. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> what I do remember, there was some horrible fake fur. I don't know what seen it was for and I was allergic to the fake fur so I got absolutely stringy it was absolutely horrible I, I think I actually had to go home for a day because I was so allergic to this fake fur on the set and because usually our arms are up through holes in the set the fur kept this fur kept coming down into your face and I got really really um terrible reaction to it apart from that the bunny picnic was lovely <laughs> The, the, the thing that many of us who worked with Jim, I think we all felt that our job when we were after he died was to not do his work because he did right. his work and we would, but to take something of what we had learned, which was his joy in his work and his love of what he was doing. And it's hard when you're doing jobs you don't want and you're tired and you think, I don't want to do this anymore and try and think no no I, I must remember Jim who always had the heaviest puppet worked longer than anybody else in his lunch break would go to meetings you know he worked harder than everyone else but he always brought joy because he was doing what he wanted to do more than anything else ah. and it was a lesson of love and joy he loved what he was doing and he loved the people he was working with Aww. he he, he was, he just thought it was brilliant. He had this, these people that made him laugh all around him. And he, you know, what I often say, whenever he said, do it again, it wasn't because you were doing it wrong. It was because he knew you could do it better. Because uh -huh. yeah. he, he believed in all the people he worked with. He thought they were, and he loved talent. And that's not always the case. Some people are threatened by other people's talent, but he surrounded himself with people he thought were talented and loved mm -hmm. to work with. Oh, that's oh. great. I feel like somebody, I awesome. feel like somebody brought that up before uh, with Jim on on our show previously. I can't yes. remember who, though. I yeah. think somebody did. I can't remember who off the top of my head. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, Margo, why don't you take the next question? Sure. Yeah. And uh, I want to say, uh, first of all, um, 
The Dark Crystal is one of my favorite uh, fantasy films. Um, I watched it the first time when I was eight years old because my dad watched it back in the 80s when he was a kid. And um, and so I wanted to ask, what was it like to uh, work on the uh, the new prequel series, Dark Crystal, Age of Resistance? At the, at the risk of saying awesome and amazing and brilliant to every question you ask, I'll say it was amazing, <laughs> awesome, and brilliant. What was what was incredible <laughs> was, that, you know, for years, Henson had been trying to do something with the Dark Crystal, some prequel, something, and maybe it was going to be a cartoon animation of some sort. And I knew that was going on in the background. I never, ever dreamt as I don't think anybody else did, that it would be puppets. Mm. And I never ever dreamt that I would be involved in it again. So to be back doing the Skeksis I had done originally and to be involved in the new series was beyond my wildest dreams. And then to see it taken onto this level. And my thought about it always was, you know, the original, film created this world and this landscape and then the series was telling more stories and spreading it out and on the scale you know when i first walked onto the set and saw the crystal chamber to see it and the puppets it was it was incredible the scale on which it was i never dreamt you know that netflix insanity would do this thing on such a scale was just insane so i know you know people are sad that it didn't go to a second series i think it's a miracle we got that first series and we did it it's just incredible wow. and and oh. you know the artist oh to to see the costumes the puppets and to have brian and wendy frouds working on it again and their son toby working on it incredible incredible and Lisa Hansen there and all and and what was also wonderful was so many of the producers were women the artistic the team were women so they had the 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 scale of the female characters they were really strong and this female led um the Mordras who led the world um the, the female um matriarchal societies mm. so it was incredible on so many levels uh, amazing um, amazing thing that it happened and that on the level it did it was it's incredible piece of work uh, mm. that's awesome so so can you talk a bit about you we mentioned this more towards the uh, beginning but can you talk a bit about uh, your time working on the animal show i love the animal show was great. I mean, what what has been lovely for me is that Jim loved working in England so much. And, you know, the Dark Crystal came back here, having been made in England originally, and came back here and gave work to virtually every British puppeteer ever, eventually, in the world. Um, so the animal show, again, that was... Uh, Steve and Dave and Bill Beretta. That was where I first met Bill Beretta. Mm. Um, so we did, we filmed that Norwich, I think, and Wet Norwich and Wembley, or I don't know, two different series. And that was great fun because it was very, very quick. Um, all the animals, uh, we were speeding through it because it was, I guess, a low budget, so we had to get through it very quickly. But all the animals would have songs. It was just fun. We laughed. A you know, one of the things about this job, we laugh a lot in it. <laughs> There's a lot of fun and a lot of people being naughty and in a, in a <laughs> lovely way, but working very hard. You know, the kind of the energy of the humour that gets you through, because it's very physical. It's very hard physical work. But there is a lot of humour and and love within the puppeteer, the puppeteer group. You know, you have you're very physically close with it all, and doing hands for other people, and and literally really really wrapped in each other's arms. So you have to know each other very well and trust each other a lot. And the animal show was very fast and 
great fun. And Jocelyn Stevenson, who who worked on the Animal Show, was you know again we all go back. And Peter Harris was directing. So it was a lot of the team who known each other for a long time. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So before I'm going to the next question, I know Margaret wants me to bring it up, but you know, since you mentioned you know, about Jim earlier, yeah. um, <laughs> so so Margot, you know, told me that you that she um loved your singing on the bring at the bring it and bring him home song at the Jim Henson memorial service yeah. and and also the the duet with Jerry Nelson when the river meets the sea. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're they're great songs. I know Mark will, will say the same thing. <laughs> well, that was an incredible thing, you know, terrifying. Because I flew out when Jim died. Um, they flew me out, and it was. I remember sitting in St John the Divine, and the puppeteers were there, and again laughing and crying because it was so awful and yet oh. the black humor of it of the the the, the muppet people always it, there was there's always humor even in the most terrible 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 situations so you're sort of laughing and crying and you know being asked to do that song because jim had loved late miserable so that was very important to him and to be able to sing with Jerry you know it, it was such a amazing thing to be part of and then I think it was about a was it a year later when Richard died and then we were singing doing another service for him at the oh. same church oh. and I sang at that as well so um you know, and and Richard was the master of ceremonies at gym, and mm -hmm. he knew then he had AIDS and was would probably die. So you know, there was a certain poignancy to that for him, for Richard. But it was a very, I felt very privileged to be able to say that you know, thank you in a way to you know to some to somehow share in that. Huh. So aside from your work with the Muppets and the Jim Henson Company, you mm -hmm. you puppeteer on a few seasons on Sesame Street. How did how did that come about for you? Uh well, they asked me to go out. <laughs> um, I don't <laughs> I don't know who uh, who suggested because Richard, the awful thing was that Richard had died before I did it. I would love to work with him, and I've been Richard who was kind of my brother in Muppets, adopted me as part of his wow. family. He took me out. I went out to Sesame Street with him. And I was there when they were doing, there's a brilliant sketch that I saw being filmed of a forgetful Jones doing Oklahoma. Oh, so, yes. Oh, my God. That <laughs> yes. is a classic. And I thought, Such it a was, classic. Yeah. Oklahoma. <laughs> oh, God, here goes Jakey singing again. Yeah. Good, <laughs> good. So, so I That's saw classic, that. Yeah. Yeah. It was absolutely amazing. And then, sadly, you know, when I went out there, Richard had died. But I did a lot of things with Kevin Clash, and I was able to do things with oh, Jerry. Yeah. Nice. And Beautiful. so, you know, it was it was lovely, and they wrote stuff for me. And I actually appeared as myself in one little bit. I uh, got to go on. So. That was brilliant. And sadly, they did ask me back, but I was actually working and I couldn't go back the last time they asked me. Um, so I haven't I haven't been back again. I, I, if I hadn't been doing so well with my theatrical career over here, I would have been able to do more on Sesame Street, sadly. But I yeah. Mm. Um, awesome. Are there any episodes or inserts you were a part of on Sesame Street that stuck out stuck out as some of your favorites? I loved all the musical numbers I did. What was great, I'd just been doing Anything Goes here on stage. And so they did a couple of numbers 
anyone's nose. They did. I think they did. So they did sort of a couple of Ethel Merman style ones. And um, I loved, I did I Am Chicken, Hear Me Squawk, Hear Me, um, which was lovely. So I did, I did some great things. I did some lovely, lovely musical numbers, but doing things with Jerry, oh. I, I can't remember now, but we did some great things, really fun, fun things. And again, what was lovely about Sesame Street, again, it's very, very quick. So you have to be on your toes and, and um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's a fun, it's such a fun show such a fun show to be part of. And I went out just before the pandemic, I was in, Richard Hunt's mother had died and I went out, there was um, a memorial for her and I went out and I went to Sesame Street and hung out. Oh, and, nice. Because uh, oh, Ryan awesome. Dill, yeah. who now is Elmo, was uh -huh. nice. on uh, Rochester Hotel, so he's lovely. And, all, and, and they're all, you know, the, the gang are all there, the, the puppeteers are all, I've known these people for so many years and um, it's my, it's the family, you know, the family and Marty and all the people on Sesame Street, they're, they're amazing. They're, yes. they're so talented, so lovely. Yes. And there's a thing about puppeteers. Um, I love acting and I, that's my other thing and I love actors, but the puppeteering thing is, is so, you're part of a team you have to have, you have to trust the other people. You can't do it on your own. You're usually working with an assist. And mm -hmm. so there is a trust and a, a community of it very much, which is wonderful. Definitely. Go, going when you get to be my age, you've known these people for a long time. <laughs> going back to the subject of Sesame Street songs a little bit, one of my favorite songs that you did was a song in South America. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yeah, I love that's that. A good, that's a great one. Yeah, it's great. What I, what I loved, and this was where I was so lucky, because I don't, I did a show here called Spitting Image. So I did some kind of impressions, but I'm not an impressionist. But on Muppets, I got to do lots of different styles. And in a way, because I wasn't a brilliant, I did one, um, is it near and far, I think, which I was my impression of Billie Holiday, but my impression of Billie Holiday isn't very good. So you wouldn't necessarily go, wow, that's Billie Holiday, but hopefully you'd go, oh, that's an interesting song. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's kind of there, it makes them all different. And I, I think, you know, the Muppet, well, they're not impressions, but they might be inspired by different real characters. Now, another another one of your most well known characters you performed, which you mentioned, which you mentioned previously, of course, was Fenella Furchester on <laughs> the Sesame Street UK co production, The Furchester Hotel. Can you talk yes. a bit about that? Well, I love that. I don't know this for sure, but I think Fenella was a little bit created possibly with me in mind someone else can probably say no that's totally untrue but i'm going to believe it's true so but i still had to audition because you always have to audition and nothing is you can't take anything for granted right but i loved Fenella, and she was slightly based on Prunella scales from faulty towers uh who was um the john cleese's wife in faulty towers and I loved that show. And I also got to do a couple of other characters. I got to do Fenella's mother, who was a great character. And we just had the best time and it was lovely because David Rudman would come over and we Cookie Monster appeared and yes. Ryan Dillon and, and Big Bird came over, Matt came over. And I got to do the Countess, which I'd never, Fran Brill was the Countess, but I got to do the oh, Countess. Wow. So that oh. was lovely, with Matt doing the Count. Because I, I, I know I did something with Jerry. I think I remember something with bats, but I, I was was not the countess. Um, but, but I did did the countess, and I thought of Jerry while while we were doing it. It was kind of for him. For Jerry. Oh. oh, that's nice. So that's, so that's that was wonderful. a such a lovely program to work on, 
and um, Warwick Brownlow Pike, you know, other yeah. tears. Warwick, who is, you know, a, a lovely, lovely friend of mine, Andrew Spooner, um, uh, the other puppeteers. Now, of course, because I'm very old, I can't remember any of their names, um, uh, but they were the wonderful. <laughs> oh, no, we are the lovely puppeteers. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, who was my daughter, Phoebe, was lovely. They're great, a great team. You get to work with all these lovely people. Yeah, for Chester Hotel's a great show. In in uh in the in the states, it aired on a channel called Sprout. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's it aired on Sprout for several years. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. it's a it's a very very sweet show. It's a lovely show. Mm -hmm. I oh, yeah. Yes, it is. Yes, definitely. So, uh, so I'm kind of curious. Do you have any favorite episodes of the Forchester Hotel? Well, I particularly like there was there was an alligator that I did, and I can't even remember what episode the alligator was in. And then there was Grandma, the one where I was the grandma, and I really liked that character because I was showing off a bit. But sometimes I'd have, I think occasionally I actually did one puppet on each hand. That may not be true. That may not be true, but they had scenes together and I would do the voice of one and the voice of the other at the same time, just just to show off, because, you know. <laughs> but um, uh, but that was great fun, and I loved the grandma character. I can't, oh, and the, the, I did a lovely song, which um, there were no guests for some reason. And then what was ironic was we'd done this way before the pandemic, but it um it suddenly seemed terribly relevant because she, there were no guests in the hotel and she was going around on her own in the hotel and I suddenly thought oh my goodness this could be a song for the pandemic it really felt terribly poignant and relevant when oh. I watched it later oh. and, and really rather sad but it was great fun because we had all, and Neil um, came in who worked, uh, um, who I later got very friendly with because he did um, uh, uh, Dark Crystal. And, and so all these people, lots of puppeteers again came in to be guests at the hotel. So it was another thing, lots of people coming and going. And it was great. It was great. <laughs> It was awesome, mm. amazing, and brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, feel, um, I feel, I just feel so lucky. And I did, um, there's a, a, a curious school of puppetry here, which is run by Sarah Wright, who um, there is the Little Angel Marionette Theatre, in here, which is very, very yeah. famous. And she runs the Curious School of Puppetry. And Cheryl Henson suggested that she get me in as a guest. She has these nights where people talk. And just looking through, I was thinking, oh, I don't know how to do this. I can't do this. And I was looking at pictures of the things I had done. And I was just struck by how lucky, you know, these incredible people I had worked with and on these incredible projects over so such a long time. And, you know, one of the things I'm aware of is it's very physically taxing, but trying to keep fit. And I say to, I was saying to the puppeteers there, there you have to be fit because you think, oh, it's puppets. It's not like acting, but it's a very, very physical job. And yeah. you have to keep your strength and, and keep flexible and keep fit and work on your voice and work on all these things as you would as an actor. I mean, it depends what kind of puppeteering you're doing because there are many different kinds, but particularly mm -hmm. if you're doing Muppet style puppets, mm -hmm. you have to keep fit. And, and we, again, Muppets and Sesame Street, we're doing the voices live. So you need to work on your voices. You need to work on your acting skills. It's all the same things you would have as a performer, uh, as an actor. But then you have to put it through your hand. Absolutely. Our previous guest, Awani Le Drew, was like, was at um, Little Angel. 
yes, theater right. too. Ronnie LeDrew, yes. Well, he Ronnie, I did, when I did the talk for Sarah Wright, Ronnie was my uh, interview interviewer. Oh, again, wow. Ronnie, I've known. oh wow! Yeah. I love Ronnie LeDrew, and I've known him. And that, that that's again the thing of you know the world of puppets. I have known him for years and years and years. Oh. And he's, lovely man so he oh, yes been... he is such a great friend of ours yes, yes. He's a lovely i even have his yes. yeah I, I even have his copy a case it be and me uh amazing, amazing book yes. yeah. so, so far yeah. I, i'm currently like in like chapter 13 out of 19 so it's amazing it's no he's he's lovely so you know it all comes around we all it's a very lovely lovely group of people um that I have worked with over many years and you know mm. every time there were sort of new people when we did Dark Crystal I didn't know Alice Deneen she was one of the people I'd never worked with before was that I think I'd worked with a Victor I'd worked with Victor I'd, a Becky I'd worked yeah. with a little bit you know but there are all these people the younger people coming in and sort mm -hmm. of along the way more people get picked up and right. I love like now with Fraggle, Fraggles Karen yes. Crowell is uh, back. I love Karen yes. Yes. yes, she's so lovely. Karen, she's, yes, she's one love yeah. Karen Pro. Yes, yeah. yeah. Well, she's amazing. So have a, she's amazing, awesome, and brilliant. So <laughs> Karen Pro, you know, when she was just coming in to Muppets and starting off, and then she went away, and now she's come back, and it's just so. Yeah, and you know, I John Tartaglia. Yes, and lots Love of John you know, they're all, they're, yeah, and I think I'm, we're going to say they're awesome and brilliant <laughs> and amazing. You forgot they amazing, Jiki. They are one thing, awesome, but, amazing, brilliant. But the, but the 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 wonderful thing <sighs> about the people who stay, you know, because people come in and don't quite fit and don't quite, you know, there, there have been people along the way who've come in and gone, but the people who stay. And if you, if you find your place in it, you stay. They are people who love it, who care about it, have a sensibility. Um, I don't know what it is, that, but there is something that makes people. Peter Linz, I haven't mentioned him, another lovely new, newer. Oh, couple. Peter Linz is wonderful. Yes. He's a great friend. But, but all these people, they, you know, they have a sensibility, a love, something that keeps them with the company and working on and t carrying it forward, hopefully, to people like you who weren't born when it started. You know? Right, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, and, and, and Wanya actually said, said hi to you. <laughs> he told Aww. me that he's, he said hello. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lovely. He, he's, he's wonderful. Awesome. So, all right, Marco, take the next, take the next question. Yes. So besides puppeteering on um, TV, film, and on stage, you've also done some radio work, mostly with BBC. Can you talk a little bit about that? What's my radio work been? I've done, well, I've done various things. I've done, oh my goodness, what radio work have I done? Um, what have I done? Uh, I, I did, um, bizarrely, a quiz show about musicals, which I wasn't very good at. I got asked to be a team leader of a new quiz on musicals by someone I knew. And I didn't do a very good job. I didn't quite know how to do that. So that was something I didn't excel at. And I've done a little bit of radio plays. I've done a couple of radio plays. I haven't done that. Oh, and I've done some musicals on radio. I should add. Yeah, so, some uh, musicals. Uh, uh, do Barry was a lady we did uh, a musical Cole Porter musical because there's another project that I was involved in a lot called the Lost Musicals which was it's a bit like do you know the Encores project I think so New so. York so we would do performances of musicals mainly from the 30s 40s 50s Cole Porter uh, a lot. I, I did a lot of Cole Porter because I would usually play parts that had been played by Ethel Merman and parts that had been played by Mary Martin um, and um, these amazing things. And we do rehearsed readings with the music in front of us, sometimes with a full orchestra, sometimes just with a piano. But one of those went out on the radio. So that was something I loved doing. 
um, those musicals because they're just a great from the greatest period of American musicals and we do these fantastic and I play a lot of the best part I like them very much <laughs> yeah uh, 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 I've always wanted to be in musicals I've done a lot of work in musicals I love straight theatre too but I've always wanted that was kind of my childhood dream to be in musicals nice Nice. Right, so Matter Julius, which one of yeah, you wants to take this next question? So you also, in addition, worked as a cabaret performer. Ooh. What's that experience like? Well, I think any most people who work in music say, oh, you should do it. I found a way of rang my friend Plaskett, who is another puppet for I've known, who worked on um, uh, Pipkin, which was a series here, Charles also worked on Image, and I've known Nigel for years and years. Nigel, you've got to help me do my show, because I knew he would make me do it. And then he rang another friend of ours, a musical director and composer, Jason Carr, who I was too frightened to ask to help me because I thought he'd say no, and Nigel rang him. And so we got this thing together and I sort of made myself do it. And then Nigel helped me put in some puppets to it. So it would be not just, oh, and here's another person singing songs. So I was singing songs, but I did a bit with the Queen puppet and Nigel's husband, Paul, makes puppets. So I had another puppet um, called Binky, who I did Rainbow Connection with, and we sang it together. And then there was a baby puppet. So, um, so that made it just slightly different. But I did, you know, I did songs as well. But, but Nigel, it was, um, it was lovely because he was able to make me do it not in a forcible way, but I knew because he is not, I get very emotional and I can't do this. And I just very calm. <laughs> yes, we booked the date, you're going to do it. Oh, oh, I guess I am. I can't do it. Just let's rehearse, shall we, and just do it. So, you know, you sometimes have to find the, the right people to help you do things and to make them happen. If you know you don't have those qualities yourself, and Nigel is a very, he gets things done. He is a good person. Oh, yeah. N N Nigel's done a lot of uh, other wonderful things, too. He, and he, of okay. course, was also in Muppets Most Wanted, I think. Yes, he was yeah. indeed. He was indeed. And he worked with the um, uh, Avenue Q. He trained all the Avenue Q puppeteers. Yes. And nice. So that, yeah. Awesome. Definitely. Yeah, Rick Lyon and John to talk about. Yeah, they're <laughs> yes. They they've done a really great job for that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Definitely. Wonderful. Yep. Jake, it's your question. Oh, oh, okay. So, so overall, what would you say you take in or learn the most from working in puppetry and acting? <laughs> well, <laughs> um. It's trying, oh my goodness, whenever I'm doing acting, I feel I've learned a lot from both to take to the other, you know, both support each other. And uh, I know I've learned from the acting to take the puppeteering and to take to the puppeteering back to the acting. But the most, I think the thing I keep trying to learn is to give it out. It's for the audience. You're trying to share something and it's something of humanity. And that's the same with the puppets and acting. And I want to do, it's a feeling particularly after what everyone's been through with the pandemic of sharing 
joy, you know, getting back a bit of joy. And I want to do things that that give hope to people. Because I think, you know, we've been through, a, the world is, it's, it's scary for young people now. I don't know how you guys yeah. feel. Yeah. And to try, but there is always hope and things are cyclical. We go, you know, when I was younger, we were scared there was going to be a nuclear war. And that has receded a bit, but that was a very real fear that someone would press that button. I don't know, maybe, you know, the way things are going with Russia, I don't know, that may be a fear again. But try, there is hope, there is, with the ecology, with global warning, there is hope. And I want to do things that bring joy and bring people closer together with love. Because love and joy and hope are the things that will keep us trying to make things better and if we go out yeah. to people as opposed to going in right i don't care about anybody else i want them to protect me 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 we're all in this together we're all in this together yeah. and puppeteers, absolutely you know we're all working together so that's what i want to keep sharing the hope and the love and the joy and Making people smile as well. Making people smile. <laughs> yes, definitely. That's pretty sweet. Yes. So, Margo, why don't you take the next question? Yes. Um, we talked a lot about your work in the past. Um, but um, is there anything that you're working on currently that you would like to share? No. <laughs> 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 I'm not working on I, the thing that I have found most exciting in my life, I perhaps foolishly, you know, I did want to be in musicals. My brother reminded me that when I was a kid, I wanted, I said I wanted to be the best actress in musicals. I wanted to act in musicals, not just sing, but do that. So I did have that ambition. But the most exciting thing for me is how things happen without planning. You kind of keep yourself open. And the thing that you think may be the thing you want isn't necessarily the thing that happens. So I still feel my job is to keep open, to keep fit, and to leap at any opportunity that comes along. And I don't know what it's going to be. And that's very exciting. Oh. And, and to mm. uh, remind people that I'm still around, I'm still available, but, but I don't know what the thing I want to do next is because it may be something I thought I didn't want to do. Yeah. Right. And when, when I had my son, I went into Mamma Mia in London and it was, it was the second year it was running and I just, he was six weeks old when I started rehearsing and it was really, really difficult. And I, it wasn't a job I thought I'd want to do, bizarrely. And I so enjoyed it. And I thought, well, that's a lesson for me. I, mm -hmm. you know, you do things that for different reasons. And it was like, right. well, I'll be doing a show and I'll be in London. And they let me bring my baby in with me to the theater at the time. And, and yet I loved it. And I met one of my very good friends on it, Leslie Nichol, who's you know, a very, very close friend. We met on that. And it was joyous, but I didn't know it was going to be. Oh. <laughs> um, and so you never quite know what is around the corner and what is the thing that is going to be the thing. And some people, I mean, Warwick, who I love dearly, always wanted to work the Muppets and he made it happen. That was what he wanted to do. He's now got a character on Sesame Street. You know, he yes. made that happen. That was absolutely yeah. what he wanted to do. He, you know, he, he was in Dark Crystal. He was one of the leading characters, the Chamberlain. And he made that happen by his absolute, you know, willed it almost to happen. Mm -hmm. I don't quite have that. But I, I love working. I love my work. I didn't want to be a puppeteer. And here I am. There you are, yeah. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't know that I wanted to do that. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. the thing of being open, but leaping into things and right. really grasping them and, and taking them on. Um, and and that's the thing I would say to anyone. You know, along the way, I've done things where I've gone, oh, I shouldn't be doing this. I'm too good for this. Don't do it then. That that was my mistake. If you do something, do it 150%. And that was Jim's legacy. That was what Jim did. So if you don't want to do something, don't do it. If you have to do it, because we all have to make money, do it and make it the best it can be. You know, we've all got to do things occasionally that we're, that are not our dream jobs, but you can make them your dream right. job, even the horrible job that you really want to do. You can be the best, whatever it is. Yeah, exactly. And enjoy it and, and you know, give something to it. Definitely. Definitely. Mm-hmm. So working in puppetry and acting, what what do you say are some of the most challenging aspects? Well, the puppetry, the physical stuff is very challenging sometimes. So to overcome the dark crystal particularly was so difficult. The gelflings were so hard. They were so hard to make look alive and and just so heavy and uncomfortable. It was it was horrible. And that was a challenge trying to feel joyous about it because they were just so horrible. They were really uncomfortable really difficult so to try and keep um working on that and learning how to do them was so difficult and i found that really really challenging and i didn't always embrace it with love and goodwill and um uh, but i tried i tried so that was difficult and sometimes it's difficult if you're doing something that you don't feel you connect with, you know, some puppets that you don't somehow just don't work for you, that sometimes with parts that you don't feel, somehow you just never get them, you never get them right. And that's difficult. Mm. Are there any words would you like to say to those watching or listening who have been supported projects you've worked on over the years? Well, One of the things that was incredible, we did a Dark Crystal convention. We did one at Elstree and one in LA. And because these are all television projects, you don't really meet people and you don't know how much influence they've had on people. But I found it absolutely overwhelming, particularly the one at Elstree, because it was smaller, to see these people coming in who Dark Crystal, again, weren't born when it was made, but had in some way changed their lives, affected their lives. They had drawn from it, gone on to do artwork from it, based on it, it had inspired them. The LA people said, I went into the film business because I saw this film. That's incredible to have been part of these things that have had so much influence on people's lives. And I, it made me feel very humble because at the time you're just doing it, it's a job. You don't know, you know, Dark Crystal, who knew it would still be being talked about all these years later. And the Muppet Show, all these characters that they are still going on. So I just say thank you to all the people out there and thank you because it means a lot to us. You mean a lot to us to know that it has had that effect and it means so much to people. That's very, very moving to all of us, I know. And I know one of the things that I found very moving, Jerry Nelson, when he was ill and couldn't really get out, he was going on, you know, that that he had connection with all the fans on the internet and that he was able to connect with people. And that was amazing for him to get that kind of feedback. Um, Yeah. I love that he was able to connect with everyone. So it's yes. it's incredible to know, you know, that you've been part of something, and I feel a very small part of it, but to be part of something that has had such an effect 
and means so much to so many people and that you're all being inspired by it still and doing things going out there taking taking it onwards you know paying it forwards as it were uh -huh. so thank you yeah. thank you thank you yeah and that you have your lovely puppet absolutely our pleasure yes absolutely so since we're, since we're getting close to wrapping up here even though i don't want to wrap up because it's been so fun <laughs> but <laughs> me too you feel the same Chris. if if people would like to connect with you where can people find you where can they find me um well i'm on twitter i don't i i make it a policy not to be facebook friends with anyone who isn't a friend Mm -hmm. but so i don't you, you know i don't do that with fans right. but i am on twitter and um you know i will get messages and respond to them but but i'm thrilled to hear about people being inspired by our work it makes me so mm -hmm. so happy now the last question that uh our guest co-host of today margo is about to ask yes. this is a question we ask at the end to all of our guests yes yes um so, of course, this podcast is called uh, Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show. When you think of nostalgia, what do you think or how would you define the word nostalgia? Ooh, ooh, that's a difficult question. Um, but this is too intelligent a question. You sprung that on me. Um, <laughs> well, it's things from your past that you that that I think make you feel good I think you're, if you're nostalgic you look back to them with happiness and with warm feelings they're they're a time that you like something something that you have felt safe with I think it, it's safe did I get it right yeah of course. yeah I think yeah. so yeah I think so yeah, yeah. square words to end all yes. that well, well, uh, Louise, thank you so much for doing this. This is a blast. Yeah, yes. thank you, yes. thank you yes. so much. Thank you so much for doing it. And, and thank you so much for, for what you've done to be a part of our lives. And keep up the great work and see what's next for you, Louise. So thank you again. Yes. And you guys go forth and do your stuff and be yeah. inspired thank to you. do your stuff. Yes, and thank you. you. Think yes. What I would say Absolutely. is don't do what we've done. Do your stuff. Yes. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. Louise, yes. I would like to say something before we end this. I just want to say, besides uh, Steve Whitmire, you are also one of my favorite puppeteers as well. And um, you've also inspired me, like, you know, uh, with I love your your singing on like the Muppet Show. I love your um, musical numbers. And um, I you you just inspired me like so much. Well, that's so, that means so much to me, Mario. I can't tell you. Thank you so much. It really is. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and and go and, forth and use your talents. And you go and inspire somebody else. Uh, definitely. And Margo, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, this, yes, thank you so much. Thank, you. Yes. thank yes. you so much for having me. Yes. Yeah. And Yes, and friend. to all of our viewers and listeners, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Jake's Happiness Out Show. We absolutely enjoyed our time having Margo as a guest yes. co-host and Ooh. with our Thanks. guest, Louise Gold. Thank you again, Louise. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. And to all of our viewers and listeners, remember to keep nostalgia alive. Bye, everybody. Take care, everyone. Bye -bye. See you Bye. 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 Thank you for tuning in to another wonderful Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show interview. Be sure to follow Jake and the crew on social media and stream the show wherever you find your favorite podcasts. And as always, remember to keep nostalgia alive. Bye-bye.